James, lovely to, to meet you. Can you, you tell us about the, the film that you've got here? So the film we've got here is called Definition of Fear. Um, it's a psychological horror shot in Canada uh, involving four girls who go to this uh, remote, uh, beautiful house by a lake and find that it's not the weekend they'd planned. Um, it's got lots of twists. I know that's a pretty basic story, but lots of twists. It stars um, the main actress, an actress called Jacqueline Fernandez, who's a huge Bollywood star. I think has 25 million people on Facebook. Um, although she's also doing a, a Hollywood movie at the moment. Um, and in, we're very excited by it, and we're excited to have it here as one of the screenings. And it's an interesting concept, isn't it? The definition of fear. You know, what is the definition of fear? So, how did you then research that to be able to then create the script? Um, I'm really into psychology. Um, you know, I've been into things called NLP, neuro linguistic programming, and Darren Brown, all that stuff. And I had the idea of it be nice to play with people's minds. And fear. Um, the whole film, premise of this film is that fear can be manipulated. So this, uh, the main character, uh, takes three girls away for the weekend to make a short se secret film about how they can manipulate fear for her degree um, submission. But then something happens that wasn't planned for. And in fact, it isn't that just her that's playing with these girls' minds. And um, the whole thing turns to be quite a horrific uh, experience for them. What's, what's interesting watching this as well is the, the that it's obviously fear is very subjective, isn't it? And so for you bringing in different elements of fear that will affect people in different ways must have been quite challenging. As well. It was challenging. Um, in fact, what was funny about this film? I mean, I, I've been involved in the film in the music industry first as a writer, producer, then film. I think I've been involved in thirty films from uh, films like with uh, Pacino, De Niro in. Um, and this was obviously a reasonably low budget film in, in, compared to those Hollywood films. And I, I will tell you, everything went wrong on this film, really. And I, it was the best planned project I've ever done. Um, we, my co-producer, um, Chris Branch, won an Oscar the year before last. So we had a really great team. But from three days before we started shooting, it was jinxed. Uh, we found that our lead actress, who was flying in from a very big film, the um, Canadian authorities had got her visa wrong and wouldn't let her get on the plane at Hong Kong. So we had to literally go up to the Prime Minister of Canada, luckily, and get it turned around. Then five days into the shoot, and I'd already lost three days, there was a terrorist attack. Literally, I had an armed guy with a machine gun guarding me in my hotel, wouldn't let me out of the room. And ISIS went and shot dead a uh, soldier in Ottawa, which was on all the news. I did three broadcasts from my hotel, and we had quite a few uh, senators staying at our hotel, so they locked down our hotel. It was literally across the road, and this poor soldier got shot. And then, the, I think, if you probably remember it, a man ran into the parliament building, was shot dead, trying to kill the prime minister, um, or the premier. And um, it was just crazy. I had 60 or 70 crew locked 20, uh, 20 miles away, and I, cu I couldn't get there with Jacqueline because we were locked down um, for a whole day. And uh, so it was kind of, you know, it's not a thing you normally put in your budget and your schedule, a terrorist attack. Well, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Because this is an independent film and you don't have a big budget. So, you know, time really is money, isn't it? Yes, I say that for all producers. You, you have to do and directors, you have to do as much homework as you can and prepare for the reason you never know what fate's going to throw at you. And you know, I, I've done all these films, I've never obviously had a terrorist attack. And um, you know, and, and it was actually a sober thought. I did a live radio broad, uh, broadcast from the hotel with uh, BBC Radio. And at the end of it, I suddenly thought, actually, I'm panicking because my crew's doing nothing 70 miles away, but there's some poor um, wife with two young children whose husband's not coming home today because he's been shot dead. So it does put it into context, you know, it really does. Um, but you just have to do as much preparation and then be prepared to think out the box. Very, very true. And you know, going to the location, back, you, the, we've got almost like the cabin in the woods and uh, by a lake. And as soon as you go to a location like that, you instantly know something scary is going to happen. What is it about those kind of locations that... I think it's partly, you know, it, it partly is you set people up. I mean, um, but actually that ca that cabin, which when they see the film, is an amazing house. It's a real house. It was spooky. 
It really was spooky. I mean, I wouldn't have stayed there overnight. We had security there, and uh, they laughed and said, why don't you stay there tonight? I said, no, no, I'll go back to the hotel. Um, I'm quite fine as I am. It was pretty scary. Um, and, uh, I mean, they tried to wind me up. They said, look, you know, go for a walk by all means, but watch out for the brown bears. I said, you are joking, aren't you? I said, well, no, they're kind of waking up about now, so don't leave any food around. And if you hear a rustling in the bushes, and of course the crew were doing it all the time, rustling bushes, so I'd turn around and go, what's that? They find it's the sound guy. Um, oh, it's only a big brown bear. Don't, you know, they're fine unless they're really hungry. Playing the director, your method, uh, method director. Definition of fair, yeah. With regard to the actresses as well, was it important for each character to have their own their own personalities, make them all very different from one another? Yes, it was. Um, we were um, Jacqueline obviously was a big name. She's done eight films and won awards. Um, the other three girls, one of them was totally unknown. I auditioned her and I just loved her. Um, one of the great things about making films, and we, we all have reasons for making films, apart from the fact it's a lovely environment, is as a director or sometimes producer, you have occasionally the ability to sprinkle stardust. And we did that with one of our girls on, on the cast, and since then she is now the star of the biggest um, new TV drama in Canada, uh, which is huge. Uh, it's, it's just been launched in America, and we started her career. And, you know... It's quite exciting to do that. I mean, you know, A, because they love you forever for doing, giving them that chance. But, you know, the ability occasionally to spot something and believe in it, and then it really happens. And we're here at the London International Film Festival this evening. So what is it? You're, you're back home. You're, you're back in the UK. What's that feel like bringing you uh, It is. I've been away for a year and a half nearly and doing other things. And I'm about to go away again most of next year shooting Canada and New York. Um, and I'm off to... Uh, probably shoot in Beirut actually in September another film um, where I've never been but it's quite a, a reasonably big film uh, and so I'm excited about that but it's great to be home it's great to see people great to support this place uh, Genesis the, you know the Genesis Theatre and, and kind of all these film festivals which always have difficulty running because of budgets and, and raising money it's great they do because they, they give new people particularly new people opportunities to meet other people and to have their work shown